How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Today, I'm joined with the one and only Keith Ryan. How you doing, Keith? How's it going, Jamie? All good. And we're going to just briefly uh, look over all the, the interesting results in the first division over the weekend. We had four interesting games, loads of goals. What you make of the games, Keith? I'm sure you're at the break game. Yeah. Uh, do you want to start with the break game? Yeah, let's go ahead. Um, you. Uh, I said it to you before we start recording. I mean, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't a four-one game. Um, Patterson opened the scoring in the first half. Uh, Bray started the game quite well. I thought Jamie. Um, they were playing a bit of ball on the ground, and uh, I said in my fan reaction, uh, it's the exact same. Like we we played well in the first twenty minutes, but um, like Patterson's goal, like two three keepers wouldn't have saved it. And that's I'm I'm, I'm being serious saying that um, it was right into the top corner, twenty-five yards out. Like what a finish! The, the guy, I think he's on eight goals this season now. Um, yeah. so I mean, if any of the bigger clubs like your Rovers or Pats or you know, if they're looking at him, like I mean, he'd be a great addition to your team. Um, in terms of second half, Bray Bray came out again on the front foot, but uh, Shane Griffin kind of just walked through the defence and made a two 0 That was kind of game over. Like um. As such, you know, kind of you can see heads dropping and stuff like that now. Yeah. Uh, right, the management team tried to change it up a little bit. Went three five two, trying to get something out of the game. Uh, Kevin Knight scored from a set piece. Um, it, at the end of the day, it turned out it was a consolation. But um, and then Warder's tour goal. There was a there was a hint of handball. Um, with the new rule though, like you know, it was it was accidental as such. You know, he didn't yeah. mean to handle it. Um, but the goal came from that move. And then Britain, Britain got that goal, and then he got it second uh, to make a four-one. So, uh, it it sounds like a convincing win for Waterford, but it wasn't as convincing as the scoreline suggests. I see. I get you. So overall, as a Brave fan from a Brave perspective, would you say that they've improved over the last few weeks coming into this game, or was it much more the same? Obviously, you know you're saying they changed the the tree at the back. How did that work? We're not creating much, Jamie. Um, that's yeah. the problem. Like, if you don't create, you won't score goals, you know. And uh, the the two wingers, you know, uh, I revert back to um, the Athlone game during a couple of weeks ago. Uh, won all up in Lissy Woolen, and uh, Callum Thompson was on the right wing, and he was he was Jesus sending he was sending the left fullback for hot dogs uh, all game, like. And then he was switched to the left hand side. Now, Carl is a right foot player, and. Yeah. His left foot isn't isn't the best, you know. So, like, why he was switched, and ever since he's been kind of going back and forth, playing right wing, left wing, right wing, left wing. So, his his uh, his strong point is getting the ball tight and going down the wing and yes. crossing the ball in. But he can't do that while he's on his left on his left side, and he keeps cutting back in or tries to cut back in, and he's he's dispossessed a lot of the time. So, um, in terms of improvement. I don't know if we've improved or not because we haven't won in nine games. So yeah, you know it's 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 a tough slog at the moment, and there's obviously what we won't mention what happened last Monday, but um, I've already discussed that with Keith. But like, some fans want Devo out, some fans are on his side, some are sitting on the fence, you know. So it's tough at the moment, and it's fans are against each other, and you know they're giving out to each other, and oh, yeah, it, you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe. It. Yeah, exactly. And then when you compare it to Waterford, obviously they got rid of their manager. Uh, rightly or wrongly, you know, we can debate that all day, but sure. Uh, they obviously have an intern coming in from inside the club and he really seems to have freshened a few things up. Three months from three, isn't it, Keith, for Waterford? Yeah. They're doing superb, you know. Obviously, like you were saying, it wasn't a 4 1 game, but to, to go to Bray, no matter what season it is, no matter how Bray are doing in the year, and to come out with three points is definitely a positive result. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, three wins and three uh, under a caretaker. Um, hmm. Fantastic for Waterford. Um, look, Cork and Galway are out in front and, you know, yeah. uh, everyone expected Waterford to be up there uh, at the start of the season and including me. But, um, yeah. you know, they're, they're so far off Galway and Cork now, they're probably not going to catch them, you know. So, uh, what, what Waterford have to do now is kind of, I know it's so early on to, to say that, but, you know, they'll have to just... They're going to be in the playoffs. There's no doubt about it. They're going to be in the playoffs. So, yeah. what do they do for the rest of the season? Do they try and build on on what they have or or not? Um, they'll definitely be uh, 
like they, I'd say the 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 Premier Division team who finishes ninth. If got if Watford went to a playoff final, they certainly put it up to teams because they have they have players like Patterson, like Junior. Um, I thought just Eddie Nolan, Killian Campbell were f- excellent at the back. Um, the other yeah. night, obviously Killian is an expert A player, um, but they were excellent. So they have a solid foundation there now. I know they're missing Cantwell for a lot of the a lot of the time that Morris was there. So yeah. uh, which is unfortunate for him, but um. Probably you mentioned about the change of manager. It probably had to happen, unfortunately for Ian. Um, but um, maybe they'll give it to uh, to power for the till the end of the season. You never know. Yeah, it's been very impressive. I think as well, like you're saying about building on the squad. Like you look at that Watford team, and they've got a load of young talent that are really starting to come through. Like Shane Griffin, Dara Power. Obviously, then you have the experienced lads. You know, like Eddie Nolan at the back. So it's definitely a good mix. And as well, I think I could be right in saying this. Uh, Junior and Patterson are on multi-year deals, which is rather unusual for you know, our first division club. Obviously, they're full-time, so although they probably haven't stayed the way that they want it, the teams seem, the things seem to be in place, and hopefully they can stick with one manager now for a while and start to build on what they have. Anyway, all right, so I think it's fair enough. We've covered that fairly well anyway, unless you have anything else to add, Keith? No, no. Perfect, all right, so let's jump into Athlone and Cork. A very interesting game. Obviously, Cork went out. 2-1 victors, you know, a last-minute winner. A brilliant strike from Aaron Budger to win the game. Capable of winning any game. It was beautiful. But um, just personally, I thought Adelon were very good in this game. I watched the highlights. Um, I thought they were superb. I thought Thomas Ottawa, um, obviously he missed a few big chances, but he really looked very impressive. He was causing Cork a lot of problems at the back. Uh, what did you make of the game, Keith? Yeah, um, when the scoreline came in, uh, like... We were we were watching our phones obviously at the break game as well. They are just looking at scores here, there, and everywhere. And it came in as one 0 to to Athlone after a minute. I was like, well, mm-hmm. you know, what what have they taken the, <laughs> after we did that morning? Like you know, <laughs> because everyone was obviously expecting Cork to go there and win comfortably, and yeah. it didn't turn out that way. Um, like Kalua had one cleared off the line, uh, just before the goal. Um, mm-hmm. I thought I thought he should have, or sorry, Lou across in for the for the one off the line. I thought he should have went for goal, um, myself, but uh, he didn't. And then he scores uh, with a header. And you know, I would have liked to have seen it if Athlone had held on to their eleven men. You know, obviously they, yeah. they had a the man sent off. And uh, it's funny a couple of us at the game when when the Athlone sending off happened. Uh, we were on to our <laughs> Paddy Burr accounts back in Cork mm-hmm. because you know it was just you just felt you just felt Cork had the had the experience had the had the players to go and win the game uh, which yeah. they did so um, you know as you as you said uh, before we started recording it's probably Athlone's best performance of the season mm. yeah definitely what you make for the actual penalty incident obviously uh, Ottawa again and ran very very well to the midfield obviously I think it was Keane Coleman. Yeah, it looked to me like a penalty, but there was a few protests from the court players. What did you make of it? Yeah, I didn't know what to make of it, to be honest, Jamie. <laughs> you know, if it was against me, I'd be, I'd be yeah. upset, you know, because there didn't look to be a lot in it. Um, it wasn't hacked down as such, you know. The ball was nipped by, was it Coleman or Gilchrist? I, I don't know who it was. Yeah, I think it was Coleman. And then he goes to ground. Referee straight away gave the penalty. He obviously felt it was a penalty. Um, poor penalty to take, you know, Lua, like, you know, soft and it wasn't a good save from Harrington as such. It was, it was more a poor yeah. penalty. And then for him to miss the rebound from whatever, five or six yards, you're like, how have you missed that? It was easier to, like, I, I actually can't understand how he's missed it from that. <laughs> an crazy. open goal, an open goal. It wasn't, it wasn't as if it was hopping over and just put your, put your laces through and, you're, you're back in front, you know, um, and they'd be kicking themselves for that because obviously Athlone haven't won this season either. So um, that would have been a big scalp if they had won that game. Yeah, it would have been huge. As well, I think all the Galway fans are probably annoyed without Thomas Oliver for missing that one as well. But sure, there'd be another game when you know the goal will go in. Let's say. But anyway, we'll move on to the Galway game anyway. So they played in St Colmes Park against Cove, uh, a dominant four 0 win away from home. They seem to be very impressive. Um, from what I've seen of this game, Edward McNally, he scored two goals, but even outside of the goals, he was bossing this game. Absolutely superb. Uh, is it Mohamed Dimas, uh, yeah. the Spanish guy? 
great Manu. player. Manu, was it? Manu Dimas? Manu, that's it, yeah. Manu yeah. Dimas. Uh, great player. I really think he adds a bit of flair to that team. And as well with Galway, you know, they have a lot of hard workers. So it takes, you know, one or two flashy players to really win games. I really liked, you know, obviously Conor McCarty sitting in behind the the midfield. He was brilliant. Um, I just think overall Galway were very, very comfortable. And as for Cove, uh, they didn't really offer much. From I, obviously, I watched the highlights for this one, and uh, there wasn't really many highlights in favour of Cove. So it looked like Conor Cairns had an easy enough day out. Um, but overall, you know, that's a bad run of results for Cove at the minute. They haven't been getting what they need. And you're starting to see maybe a bit of a gap between the bottom two and everyone else. Yeah, um, like how goal scoring wise, you're on an all right run for a couple of weeks yeah. trying it. And Whitmarsh are on the score sheet quite a lot. I was actually yeah. talking to Gavin Woods about this game. I actually haven't seen any highlights of this game, unfortunately. But Gavin mm. was was uh, in high praise about McCarthy. Um, I got that right, McCarthy, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. McCarthy, yeah. Um, he was, he was saying it was a fantastic player, built built like a tank. And I said, Gavin, all the Galway players are built like tanks. If you look at Galway, yeah. they look so strong physically. Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a typical John Caulfield team. They they bite at your feet, they bite at your feet. And what surprised me is they got four goals. Because mm-hmm. typically a Caulfield team, you know, he'd be happy to take a 1 0, particularly down in Cove or your treaties or whatever. Um, yeah. Got four goals. It'll help that goal difference, you know, because Cork have been firing on all cylinders this season. So, um, the first division potentially could come down to goal difference. Um, so yeah. they need to, they need to keep up that uh, momentum. Dimas, yeah, I said it a few weeks ago. They don't really have that type of flair player as such, but they have they have that person that could probably turn it on, um, from game to game, you know. Um, but they don't have a consistent flair player. Um, yeah, but they don't. If if you're scoring four goals, you don't need that, you know. I thought also, also uh, Alex Murphy, left full, obviously he's attracted some interest across the water. He was really good in this game. You know, it's very rare when you look at highlights and you point out at a fullback, but uh, he was superb on that left side. He was really linking up well with his winger, and to be honest with you, from the looks of it, Cove really didn't threaten much. So I assume he was uh, allowed a bit of freedom to go forward. Do you think? Do you um, think Alex Murphy may? eventually become a winger um, like Gareth Bale yeah there's definitely a chance because like you're saying you know with Gareth Bale he definitely has the composure in attacking areas to even you know whip in a good ball or to beat a man so you know there's definitely opportunities for him there I think with Caulfield's side obviously you know not being disrespectful to Caulfield in any way here but like his first mindset is probably to defend and that's what Caulfield's drilled into him Um, and maybe when he goes over to England that will really serve him very well when he's you know struggling to break into teams. But um like a, a bright spark in that team. And like you're saying, there's definitely the opportunity for him to go wide and do really well in my opinion. You know, you see all these really advanced coaches. I assume he might be in an under twenty three side over in England or something and they're all really big on their, their technical players and Alex definitely fits the bill. So uh, I definitely see a world where he becomes a winger, yeah, definitely. What did you make of him when you know we've seen him obviously on highlights and playing Bray? I've been, I've been, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been very impressed with him um, in all the yeah. games I've seen. You know, he's creating goals. He scored against Treaty a few weeks ago as well. So mm-hmm. he's getting himself in the box. That's that's where I'm kind of thinking he's a bit of a Gareth Bale type. You know, he's not yeah. afraid to get forwards. You know, and obviously Bale started off as a left fullback and then obviously transformed into mm-hmm. probably one of the best players in the world. Not at the moment, but probably one of the best players in the world. I'm not saying Alex Murphy. I'm, I don't need to put pressure on him, <laughs> but. Like if you can if you can certainly transform into a into a winger that will score you ten goals a season, whoever he goes to, he'll only benefit them. Yeah. So um yeah, it's uh a like Galway are obviously delighted to still have him, you know, but if he doesn't go in the off season, you'd wonder though, he said Keith a few weeks ago, he's he's playing left fullback. Stephen Walsh is scoring goals yeah. at the moment for Galway, who's a left full back as well, but he's playing up front, so Will he revert back then, um, and will Galway miss that that kind of impact yeah. that he's had up top? So, um, probably not, but um, we'll see. An interesting one, yeah. Obviously, it looks like he could be going in the summer. We don't know how it's going to play out, obviously, but that's definitely a problem Coffee might have in the next few weeks. Uh, all right, so the last game, um, 
we obviously have is the game that happened on Saturday between Longford and Wexford. Uh, obviously, Longford ended up 2-1 victors here. Uh, a very good game, I have to say. I watched the highlights and enjoyed it greatly. Uh, the game started, Wexford went one nil up. A brilliant free kick from Jack Doherty. Uh, I have to say, I've said it to you, Keith, before. I think Jack Doherty's a really good player. Very, very classy. And uh, they've missed him whenever he's not on that side. They really have. Um, so, yeah, obviously that went one nil up. And then uh, since then, you know, I'll be honest, Longford probably looked the dominant side after the one nil. They were really putting on the pressure. And I thought Alex Moody in goal for Wexford, I think his name's Alex Moody, yeah. Uh, I thought he was very good. Made a few good saves. And then uh, eventually, I think it's, uh, yeah, Eric Malloy scored a header. Brilliant header. Great ball from Shane Elworthy, the right foot for Longford. I have to say, I thought he was decent last year in the Premier Division. And, you know, I haven't really seen him much this year, but he was very impressive in this game. Um, but, you know, as for the header, beautiful header. Alex Moody couldn't have done anything to save it. Then, um, Overall, I thought and one of the best players was obviously Ryan Graydon, who you know a lot about. I thought he was superb. Uh, there was one chance he hit it on the half volley almost. They hit the crossbar. Superb. He was absolutely brilliant throughout the whole game. I thought, you know, Lorcan Fitzgerald would have been at centre half and he was cutting in all the time, Ryan Graydon on the right hand side, and really causing a lot of problems. I was really impressive. And obviously, you've seen him a lot at Bray. Um, surely seeing him do really well at Longford makes you. A bit jealous, Nady Keith. Yeah, um, I said it in the off season when when I heard Graydon was gone, he's because he played so well for us last season, season before as well. Last season, you you know, with Ryan, um, his temper sometimes gets the better of him. You know, he was sent off twice yeah. for us last season, both against Athlone. But when Ryan is on his game, he's on his game. You know, there's no, there's probably no better. I'm gonna. Like obviously Patterson, I've said about Patterson. Patterson as a winger is brilliant, but Roy Gray yeah. on his day can be one of the best uh, wingers in, in the division, you know. And yeah. he obviously came from Bohemians. He played for Bohemians, and uh, he took a step down. And but like fantastic, maybe his final ball can be a little bit better. Um, mm. but you know, I think he got Player of the Month for Longford uh, this month, so um, they obviously like him up there. Um, great, great to have, great kid to have, you know. And uh, if he can, if he can just get his final ball, you know, definitely they, he'll create more chances. And obviously Longford, if they if they get the people in the right positions, they'll score more goals. So, um, just on Alex Moody uh, for Wexford, played well against Bray last week and saved the penalty as well. So uh, he definitely has it in his locker. Um, and Jack Doherty, me and Keith discussed him last week as well. Absolutely fine player. Seems to be this season, um, his injuries have kind of disappeared. He did carry a yeah. few injuries here and there. So it's yeah. uh, Wexford probably delighted to um, whatever programme he's on. He seems to be uh, fending the injuries off. So um, if they can keep him fit and they can they can get a, a push for the playoffs, he'll be a key player for them. Definitely. And obviously the tarnish in this game is in the last minute, you know, for Wexford. Uh, Fitzgerald obviously got sent off a straight red card. I'm not sure if you've seen it, Keith, but um, for me, it was no. definitely a red card. Yeah, he came right over the ball. And I'm not sure who the Longford player was, but very, very poor tackle. Definitely a red card. Uh, and from that free kick, actually, Longford whipping the ball last minute and Sam Burden got his head in it. So, obviously, that'll be very annoying, I'm sure. Fitzgerald will not be very happy with that at all because, you know, he's such an experienced player. We all know, you know, he's a real leader in that side. And, you know, I didn't expect it from someone like Fitzgerald. And, you know, maybe it was a sign of his... His age, maybe he wouldn't have been able to get that ball a few years ago. He would have been able to get there, no bother. But uh, ultimately, you know, he'll be very frustrated with that. And I'm sure Ian Ryan as well, you know, he had the opportunity to go up to Bishop's Gate and get a point. Uh, and in the end, you know, a brilliant header from Sam Byrne and really just seals the three points for Longford. Yeah, uh, on Fitzgerald, you know, uh, he'll be missing for whatever amount of games, you know. And as you yeah. said, the experience that he, he brings to the team, um, he certainly keeps Wexford kind of tight at the back as such um, and he's telling the young players kind of where to play and what to do you know so exactly. uh, him missing for a few games I know he's coaching down there as well he's kind of a player coach so uh, yeah. it won't be good um, for Wexford um, you say about missing Ryan Graydon uh, Sam Verdon last season for Bray he couldn't he, he couldn't he didn't perform for us as I, because when Sam Verdon obviously he was with Pats and you know a little bit about yeah. 
Um, yeah. When it, when he signed, I was like, wow, that's that's a good sign, you know. But he didn't really kick on for Bray. But he seems to have found his um, his club. And I know he's done well for Longford before. And he's got some crucial goals for them this season. Longford, you know, it's unfortunate for them because they had two defeats in a row um, the last few weeks. One against Cork. Um, and that kind of killed their momentum a bit. They were, they had, they have games in hand and, you know, they were on the coattails of, uh, yeah, of golf. They're almost course. dark horses up until then, yeah. I definitely. thought they were, Jamie. I thought they were. I said, well, Longford are playing well. And I said to Keith, the only thing that might kill Longford is the fact that their squad isn't big enough. Um, yeah. And Gary, over the years, has had its small squads anyway. But, uh, yeah, it's a pity for them because, um, and obviously Craven has been injured the last few weeks as well. So, uh, he's a big player for them. So, um yeah, Longford and Watford, yeah. it's kind of their season. Not that it'll peter out, you know, but they're not going to win the league. Um, they prepare for the playoff, you know, so. Yeah, I think it was with Longford especially, obviously, we're talking about Sam Verden here, but over the course of the season, for me anyway, it just seems like if they had a goal scorer, it would be perfect. It's just the one thing that they're missing. They're creating chances, but from what I've heard from uh, a few Longford lads, you know, they need that final pass, that final goal, and it's just not really working for them. So, you know, maybe in the summer, from what I'm hearing, they'll be looking at a few attackers, which would be brilliant for them because, like you're saying, you know, the playoffs is probably where they'll end up. So it's going to be big for them just to really give it a go. And, you know, with Longford, you know, maybe they went up a year too early when they were in the Premier Division last year, whereas now, you know, they've got a new manager in Cronin. You know a lot about him. And I'm sure he'll continue to build something really good there. But, Jamie, it's you, you mentioned about going up too early. UCD are probably yeah. the same this season, you know. Yeah. The teams that, that go up uh, through the playoff, if they've beaten a, a team, you know, UCD are going to get go straight back down. Longford went yeah. straight back down, you know. So it's it's a tough old, it's tough to, to kind of establish yourself in the Premier Division after coming up, um, mm. particularly through the playoffs, because, you know, and even Shells are not, are not, yeah, you're right. as, as, as good as they, as they want this season. So, um, I don't know. It's like Longford will be happy with a playoff, probably. They they definitely will, you know. It's like Cork are full time and Galway are full time. So, um, to get anything anything more than a playoff would be a bonus for for Longford or or for Treaty or for Bray or whatever, you know. So, um, we'll see where it goes. But uh, you know, in terms in terms of uh, Wexford, they'll they'll be up there as well. You know, they're a good outside. And they gave Bray yeah. a good game last week. So, uh, you know, it's um, a tough place to go. Very carried. So, um, yeah. Definitely. All right. So, cheers for hopping on, Keith. That was very good. Obviously, we went through the four games. Uh, a few interesting score lines, but sure. That's the first division. I'm sure you'll have more of it now on Friday night. Uh, are you going to a Bray game? I can't. I have work commitments, unfortunately. Oh. We're we're <laughs> down in down the markets field. So, uh, it'll have to be LOI TV for me. Ah, I'm sure that'll be grand anyway. All you want is a Bray win. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, Keith. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe to Irish Footy Vlogs for the best League of Ireland content.